Are you trying to figure out how to use arrays with functions in Arduino? Maybe you want to pass an array to a function or multiple arrays to a function. And maybe you even want to try to like output an array or something like that. Is that even possible with Arduino? The core difference in dealing with arrays than when dealing with other data types called primitive data types like integers and floats and bytes and that kind of thing is that arrays are passed by pointer, not passed by value. So if you want to learn how to figure out how to pass an array to a function or multiple arrays, then watch this video because that's exactly what we're going to dive into. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is point out this function right here. I'm going to zoom in. All right, let's zoom in on this puppy. I got this function called add, you know, really uh, creative here. It takes two values, val1 and val2, and there's their integer values, right? And then what do we do inside this function? We just add them together, and then we return the result. Now, in this program, I've got num a and num b. Num a is 5, and num b is 3. And then down here in setup, I am setting the integer sum equal to the output of that add function, right? And we pass in num a and num b. Okay, so let's check this add function. When the add function takes those values in, val1 and val2, so that val1 would be 5 and val2 would be 3, it actually makes a copy of those values in here. So val1 is different than num a. It's just, it happens to be holding the same value, 5. And val2 is different from this variable num b. They just, you know, they copied over the value. We passed by value into this function. And so anything we do with val1 and val2 inside this function only affects val1 and val2. It doesn't affect num a and num b. Okay, so maybe that sort of makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, so that's like, you know, this add function. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Well, let's look at a function that takes arrays as inputs. So this function is called element wise multiplication and it takes three arrays of floats. So array one is an array of floats, array two is an array of floats, and buffer is an array of floats. And then it also takes a length variable and then it just does some math on these arrays, all right? Namely, what it's doing is an element wise multiplication. And let's just take a look at these uh, arrays real quick here. So we've got a weights array, an inputs array, and an output array. So let me just line these up real quick. That, that might help a little bit. What it's gonna end up doing in our function here is, is it's gonna multiply the first element of this array times the first element of this array, and it's gonna save the output, that product, it's gonna save it into the corresponding element in this output array. And then it'll take this element, multiply it times this element, and save it into the next one, and then this one times this one, save it into the next one. Hopefully that sort of kind of makes sense. And so if we look down here in the setup, we've got element-wise multiplication, and we pass in weights, inputs, output, and num elements. Okay, so the primary difference here is that when we are passing an array into a function, the function does not make a copy of the values in the array. So like this array weights right here, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0, those values are not copied into this function. Instead, what's copied is a pointer to the memory address where the data begins. Now you might be thinking to yourself like, what are you talking about? Memory locations, all this crazy stuff. Listen, man, I just need to know how to use arrays and functions. What's the jazz? Okay, I totally get you there. Now, if you are interested in those finer details, we do have a course on using pointers and deep diving into this kind of thing. So you can check that out at your convenience. But the bottom line is this. When you pass an array to a function and you do something to the array in the function, then the actual array itself that you passed in is going to change, right? So if you pass in weights to a function and you start like multiplying, you know, the elements in here times something, it's going to change this actual array right here. 
it's not going to act on a copy of those values. It's going to act on the actual array. And that is because when we pass in an array, it gets passed by pointer. So it's the pointer that gets copied into the function, not the data. So this kind of leads us into how can we get an array returned from a function? Well, the shorter answer is you cannot return arrays from functions. The best you can do is return a pointer to an array from a function. But what you can do is pass a function like a quote unquote storage array or an output array or a buffer. And then that function will store your quote unquote output in that array. And that's kind of what we're doing right here in this element wise multiplication function. So up here, I declared an array named output of length num elements, which is three. And I'm passing that to this element wise multiplication function. And what I do inside the function is I update that array. So here we, we refer to it as buffer, but you can see buffer is getting updated. And what's happening since we are passing by pointer is that my output array is now getting updated. So let me shrink this code a little bit, try to get more of it on the screen. So down here in setup, I'm calling the function element wise multiplication. I pass in weights, inputs, output, and num elements. And if I were to print output after I call this function, I am going to see the product of these inside output. So let me go ahead and do that just so you believe me, but let me do that real quick and then we'll see. All right, so I uh, threw in a little function here to print arrays, and you can see when we print it before, we get all zeros. When we print it after, we get the product of these, right? So 8.5 times 0.1 would be 0 0.85, 0 0.2 times 0 0.65 would be 0 0.3, zero times anything's gonna be zero. All right, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. I hope this was helpful. Again, there's a lot of details on memory addresses and where the stuff's getting stored and all that kind of stuff that can be, you know, can really dive down into the weeds. Again, if you're interested in that, check out programmingelectronics.com. And if you're interested in Arduino in general, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We put out videos like this all the time. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you need some questions clarified, please just ask in the comments. I really do my best to help answer those as best I can, or at least help point you in the right direction. Thanks a ton and have an awesome rest of your day. Bye.